So this banning represents a bigger problem in Magic the Gathering. Within the last few months, we had to ban Oko, Once Upon a Time, the uh, Veil of Summer, or Autumn, one of those veil veils. And we actually banned the Field of the Dead too, I forgot about that one. But we banned Hoak in Modern as well. And Mox Opal had to go, but I would I would honestly say that Mox Opal has existed in Modern for a long time. So the banning of Mox Opal was really the banning of Urza. So Urza from Modern Horizons was the real problem because, but they couldn't ban it again. They had just banned Oko, they just banned Hoak. How are they going to ban Urza, right? So they had to ban Mox Opal. But I think that Urza is still as broken as now he's not as fast, yes. But just like, you know, what which of the combo pieces do you ban? It's always kind of a, a trickier situation, right? So now we talk about this card, which they spelled incorrectly. So you know how magic players are. Of course, they're going to, um, you know, make fun of this and... That's what they're going to do. Uh, obviously, you know about Magic players. This is exactly what they're going to do. I think that when it comes down to... When it comes down to it, they're making more money than ever because the collector's booster box doesn't cost that much more. And in fact, I would probably suggest it may cost less to make because it's less heavy, there's less cards, there's only 12 packs a box. Yes, the cards are foil, but I don't think foils are necessarily very expensive to the foiling process. And the packaging is much smaller and you can cram more of it, so shipping should be theoretically cheaper. And it's, you know, Twice as expensive, sometimes depending on the pre door, three times as expensive as a regular box, which again is heavier. So when you talk about no when you talk about this, it is quite interesting that Garuda is banned and then it was banned in everything. People were making fun of it, they're making a joke about it, but I really don't believe the companion. I think a lot of legacy decks are going to run a companion. And this concept of companion is going to alter land. And you might be like, oh, that's great. It's going, definitely going to alter the landscape of things. But I'm not entirely sure that that's what you want. And I'm pretty positive that no one tested this in legacy. Magic Gathering players are scared, too scared of chains. Unlike commanders, one remover spell is put in the bin. It basically gives you a plus one, but it sets you up a, with a restriction. Okay, this post doesn't make any sense. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to read a post and try to understand this post, but yeah, they couldn't even manage to spell it right in the announcement. That's how little they cared. It might be a new Belcher deck. That would be interesting. And we'll see play in Standard and Pioneer. It just, they ran out of creative space. That's why they flip cards. They did talk about that in an article where they literally ran out of creative space. So they made the uh, card flip. Spark Double is very interesting. And I own lots of them. Because they're in the Jace Planeswalker deck. And... It's a clone effect that doesn't make it legendary, so you could stack it, which is crazy. There's just so many things that they did. And Spark Double is in War of the Spark, so it's not even like a... Re so it's not... Black Out Lion's Eye Diamond is a Black Lotus, essentially. This is crazy. The amount of crazy things you can do with companions... I don't really understand how they came up with this or even why why they would have this. Oh, Progenic Mimic is now playable, I guess. I did spec on that card. Restoration Angel, of course, because you can blink it. Phyrexian, Metamorph, Spark Double, 
Shakira as the imposter, Grim Monleth, Phantasmal Image, yeah, again. So <laughs> you just copy this one card and you go off. I saw a video where it was the guy mowed to one and he still won with the coming card. Uh, that's why they banned it from Legacy. Now, they also banned it from Mo Modern Pioneer. Uh, is it also banned from Standard? That would be pretty bad. Was it banned from Standard? I think it was, maybe. None of this makes any sense. Yeah, Legacy, Turbo Garuda, Mo to one equal win. <laughs> It's just so obvious that this is not a good idea. The companion mechanic. Um, the draft format, of course, would be great. Mutate is probably better than expected and easier to make. Companion is what worries me because I don't think anyone playtested it in any of the older formats. So in standard, it's perfectly good. I think it's perfectly pl playable in standard. But Luris and Garuda are problems in the Eternal formats. Uh, not only for Magic Online, but just to have. Like, it's pretty crazy. And of course, like, you might say, oh, well, the Legacy needed a shake-up, and now, good, it's shaked up, right? I don't know. I think this is a complete disaster. And somebody should be fired from card design because we had mistakes in the past, like the Urza Saga lands, like the Great Whale and the Drake, which untap your lands, which seem on its surface fair. But then when you're untapping your, what's that, Gayer's Cradle, then it becomes unfair. Are the Meriden Affinity Lands, the Artifact Lands with Affinity. This is just really game-changing. And it seems they're getting more and more desperate for money. Because not they had Oko, which obviously was pushed, but in a traditional sense. It was just too good. Then they have this card, or they have the whole companion mechanic. Of course, some of them will be better than other ones, and some of them will be completely unplayable, given their restriction. It is ludicrous, in my opinion, what is happening here. Because you, pay, we, we are paying them. We are paying them to test the cards for artwork, for gameplay... And it doesn't seem they are doing that. It seems like they are not doing anything where they get money. And they are getting way more money than ever before. They're getting way more money. They're, uh, they're the only sellers on Amazon, given how much Amazon takes as a commission. They are selling a bunch on Amazon. I know this for a fact. Walmart's buying even more than before. They sell boxes for two to three times the value for one third as much. And I will say that the collector's box, if you're only worried about how how much money it costs, I can't see why it would cost more money to make 12 booster packs than 36. And given the fact that, you know, yes, I understand the 12 booster packs are foil, but the shipping cost has to be way less for something that light compared to something that's a little heavier like a booster box. Pretty, uh, I don't know. This is definitely something where I don't like where this is heading because it looks like quality assurance has, there is none. Obviously, there's never, there was never any quality assurance on Magic Online, but the whole companion mechanic and the fact that, okay, it just released, it's a pretty, pretty big day. And within seconds, people found out that one of the companions was absolutely broken. So, yeah, that's where we are right now. I do not think it will get better. I think, like, my opinion is... They got to hire better people. And if it means paying them more money, they can't be cheap about it. Magic, if you go on Wizard of the Coast or you go on the Hasbro 
you go on their next, not next door, their open door, whatever the resume, the thing where the employees leave reviews, you can tell that they're being very cheap. But they're making so much money from Magic the Gathering right now for doing so very little. You know the collector's edition is the collector's booster boxes. They're just a reprint. They didn't even reprint. They did not even wait. They reprinted it the same time the cards came out. That's what I viewed it as. I reprinted it. Uh, as a reprint for a standard set that came out. So, in short, I don't know where this money is going. Honestly, I have no idea where they're spending the money. Uh, clearly, they're not spending it on testing these cards. I mean, they could honestly hire people to do it for free. Or have the MTG judges who are out of jobs right now do it for free. Why are they not, like, why is their staff so incompetent all the time? Is beyond me. Unless they're social justice warriors, which then would explain why they weren't fired, right? And they hired more of them. Hi, guys.